Well, as we have said several times already this morning, this is the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of hope, traditionally. Advent is a waiting season. It's a reflective season. It's the beginning of the church calendar. It's a time for looking toward some some hoped-for reality that is not yet completely here. And you'll hear that theme in many of the texts for Advent. The one I'm going to read today uh, is about a, a feast that God is going to spread someday, something that's not yet here, kind of, as I said to the children, like a, a big Thanksgiving feast. So hear this word of promise from Isaiah chapter 25, beginning with verse 1 and then reading verses 4 through 10a. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of the aliens like the heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with, sh- with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the shroud that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, And the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am not a person who likes to wait. I don't like traffic jams. I don't like long lines at the grocery store or any other store. I do not do Black Friday. I don't like delays at doctor's offices. I don't like to wait. I married someone who keeps me waiting a lot. (laughs) That happens at work, too. (laughs) Well, years ago, after David and I had been married for a little while, but before before we had children, we were watching something on TV, and there was a commercial that showed a little kid standing in the pouring rain in his little yellow slicker outside a movie theater. And the voiceover said, time hangs heavy when you're waiting for someone. And I pointed at the screen and yelled at David, that will be one of our children someday. (laughs) I saw the future in that ad. Well, I think most of us probably don't like waiting, even though it's really very much a part of our lives. And the season of Advent is a season of waiting. But what is it we're waiting for? Well, of course, we're we're waiting for Christmas. Children are waiting for Santa. We're waiting for loved ones to come home for the holidays, or to leave if they've been there long enough. (laughs) And then beyond the the seasonal waiting, some of us are waiting for the, the next stage of life, whatever that might be, marriage, or a new baby, or a college degree, or a new job, 
or retirement. Some of us are waiting for Prince or Princess Charming to show up. Or maybe we're waiting for the publisher's clearinghouse to show up with our $5,000 a week for life prize. Do you know, right now, it seems to me as if the whole world might be waiting for the other shoe to drop. After the terrorist atrocity in Paris, after the hotel assault in Mali, the world is anxious, waiting, it seems, to see where such evil will strike next. And we're sure the evildoers will strike again. It's just a matter of time. And into this anxious world comes the word of God from Isaiah the prophet, promising a different reality, a bountiful feast for all the nations of the world, and promises of refuge for the poor and needy, shelter from the acts of the ruthless, an end to hunger, a wiping away of all tears and suspicion and hatred and disgrace. And the most blessed promise of all, an end to the terrible shroud of death that covers the whole earth. Well, what a wonderful dream that is. What a vision for some distant time in the future. This amazing feast sounds like something worth waiting for. This cosmic Thanksgiving dinner sounds wonderful. But how long do we have to wait? What about now and this world that we live in now? What hope is there for us now? The day after the tragedy in Paris, there was an interview on French television with a a little boy who was maybe three or four years old and with his father. And many of you maybe have seen this interview because it was played on lots of different American stations as well. But the interviewer asked the little boy if he understood what had happened, and he replied, yes. Really, really mean men hurt people. The bad guys were not nice. And we have to be really careful because we have to change houses. No, said his father. Don't worry. We don't have to move. France is our home. But there are bad guys, Papa, the little boy protested. And the father being very truthful, said, there are bad guys everywhere. But Papa, they have guns. They can shoot us. They are really mean, Papa. They may have guns, said the father, but we have flowers. But Papa, flowers can't do anything. Of course they can, said the father. Everyone is putting flowers down. It's to fight the guns. The flowers protect us, the boy asked. (coughs) Yes, said the father, and the candles too. It's to remember the people gone yesterday. The flowers and the candles are there to protect us affirms the boy. Do you feel better? asked the interviewer. And with a look of serene peace on his face, the little boy looks at his father and says, yes, I feel better. That little boy against all that seems to make sense trusts his father 
that somehow the bringing of flowers and candles will protect him. But I bet a lot of us want to say to that father, but flowers can't do anything. In a world such as ours, flowers and candles can't really help us. And we want to tell God, our Heavenly Father, the same thing. And yet, God, in order to bring his beautiful vision to reality, to fulfillment, against all the evil powers of the world, against all that makes sense to those powers, sent his own son. Sent him as a small, unprotected child who would grow up to be a man who would conquer evil, not with guns or any other human weapons, but with his own life on a cross. God sent Jesus, who established this feast at this table as a foretaste of that great feast to come. Just as acorns are a sign of the oak tree to come, contain the oak tree within them. So this little table is a sign of that great feast to come. And right now, Jesus hosts us at this table, which is a sign of where true victory and true power really lie. Just as those little flowers and candles in Paris were signs of love and unity, light and beauty in an ugly and dark moment. The feast envisioned in Isaiah has already begun. God has already spread the table. God has already done away with death. God has already done this through the coming of his son, the one who is the light of the world. And as the Gospel of John puts it, the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not been able to overcome it. This is what the world had been waiting for. Who the world had been waiting for. When we gather here together in worship, when we baptize, and when we partake of this meal, this is a sign of our hope in God our Father, a sign that we trust God to make all things new, that we trust God to bring great good out of unimaginable evil. When we gather at this table, it is a sign that death has not won. Here we remember that the light continues to shine in the darkness. And no matter how bad it gets, no matter what bad things may happen, the darkness will never be able to overcome the light of Christ. And when we leave this place, we go out into the world carrying the light of Christ into all of those hard places. The world longs for that. The world waits for that. So come now, come to this table and renew your hope. And then go out into the world as the body of Christ, sent into the world for the life of the world that God so loves. Amen.